This special edition of Let's Edit with Media Composer is brought to you by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk about stylizing our footage. And more specifically, I want to talk about how we can take our beautiful looking clear as day HD footage and how we can take it and grid it up a little bit and really give it that gritty organic feel of film. It's a look that many editors aspire to achieve, but sometimes they don't know where to start to create that look. And in this lesson, we're going to use some great effects inside of Boris Continuum Complete to create this effect. And I'm going to show you how you can do it very quickly and very easily. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And here's the shot that you saw in the introduction. And this is going to be a four effect process that we're going to use to create this look. Now, one thing that you will notice is that I'm not going to use any of the standard Avid color correction tools to create this look. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, Kev, why would you not be doing that? Well, I'm going to give you two reasons. One is presets and the other is the FX browser. The great thing about BCC is that we can, once we have created our look, create a quick preset out of that, and then any time that we might want to apply it to a shot, we can simply step into the FX browser and temporarily apply it so we can get an idea if it's going to work in the situation that we're going to be working in. It's a very, very cool workflow that you should definitely get into the habit of working with if you're working with BCC effects. All right, so let's take this clip, let's drop it into a new timeline, and let's fix our blue issue first. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to the effects palette, Command or Control 8, depending on the platform you're working on, and I'm going to head to the color and tone category of BCC, and I'm gonna use BCC's color balance right here. Let's take it, again, drag and drop right down onto our shot. And I'm just going to step into effects mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut. If you don't have it mapped, remember you can always find it in its default location at the top of the timeline on the far left hand side. Now we're not going to make too drastic of a change to remove blue. It's just going to be very, very slight. Now that's one thing you're going to notice about a lot of the work that we're doing. Nothing is really very drastic, but the steps that we are taking is going to create a very drastic look to the end product. It's basically the addition of all of these effects together to create this new look. All right, so what we want to do is because we got a little bit too much blue in this shot, you can more or less see it sort of in the horizon. We can see it even on the beach. Now, to be honest, it's a little bit difficult to see until we actually make the correction. So I'm going to come down and take the blue balance. Now, a lot of people like to take the sliders and just start dragging them way out of the way. And they're like, oh, you know what? It gets too green. This is not going to work the way that I need it to. And then they go into a different effect. But remember, a lot of the changes that we're going to make are very subtle. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down to maybe about minus seven or minus eight. Let's put it down at minus eight and you'll see a very subtle change. And you can actually see the difference between the two shots. Now, one feature that I love inside of BCC is the ability to quickly bypass an effect by just simply clicking on the bypass button right here. There's the before and there's the after. You'll see a very slight change, but one that I actually like. It actually gives the sand a little bit more of that color, that brownish grayish color that I think the sand should look like. All right. Now the next effect we're going to go to is a levels effect. Now I love using levels because it's something that I use across Photoshop, I use it across After Effects, and we have the ability to use it with another BCC effect. And you'll see it right here, BCC Levels Gamma. I'm going to hold Option or Alt so that we can stack these effects on top of each other. Again, we're just going to head back to Effects Mode. And what I normally like to do first is adjust the mids of this shot. So I'm just going to grab the Gamma. Just drag it up, let's say to about there. Now, once I have the mids lifted right up, I'm gonna crush the blacks down. Let's take the blacks, let's just crush them down. That's looking pretty good. And then we're just gonna bring our whites just up a little bit. Now again, bypass is going to be our parameter of choice here. Let's just bypass to the before 
and the after, you'll see just how much more vibrant everything is. It just seems to stand out much more than it did before. All right, now I did say that we wanted to give it that gritty, organic film feel, you know, obviously of shooting on film. But this was, in a lot of cases, looking like it was shot on video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head to the category that specializes in everything film inside of BCC, and that is the BCC film style category. And we're going to be using the film grain effect. Now something that I do want to point out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my quality down to draft quality because this is a way that many editors prefer to work. But there can be some things that are a little bit deceiving when you're working inside of draft quality, especially with an effect like film grain. What we're going to do is we're going to just zoom in a little bit on our canvas here. I'm just going to move our window over here just so that I can see the beach and the horizon here. Now I'm going to take BCC film grain again, option or alt so we can stack these effects. And once I let it go, you're going to notice that a lot of grain has been introduced. And what happens at this point is that editors step into effects mode and they start trying to adjust all the parameters to try to get the least amount of grain but still make it noticeable on your shot. One thing that's exceptionally important to keep in mind, especially if you're doing effects work inside a Media Composer, is you're going to want to make sure that your quality is always set to the best quality. It doesn't need to be 10-bit, but you definitely want it to be on the best quality. And let me show you why. And this is actually why I wanted to show it to you with BCC Film Grain, because you're not getting the exact effect that you might think that you're getting. Watch this. When I come down and I switch the quality from draft to best quality, now take a look at that grain that grain looks a lot more like we think that it should look like grain. Now, of course, at any point, we can simply step in and we can come in and adjust the amount of grain that we want. I have it set to monochromatic because I don't want any more color introduced into this shot. We just want to go with that organic feel. And it's a little bit hard to see again on the canvas when I have it zoomed back, but as soon as I zoom in, you'll see it even here in the water, just how much more organic it makes this feel by adding that grain to this shot okay now the last thing i'm going to do is again in the same category that we were just in i'm going to add a vignette to this shot now a lot of people think that vignettes need to be something that stand out a lot and they don't need to do that at all in a lot of cases again you'll see all these changes that we're making are very subtle changes that once they're added all together create our powerful end result. So I'm going to head to BCC's vignette effect. We're going to take it again, option, alt, drag onto the top here. Now for me, this is way too much. We just want to back off on this again to make it very subtle. I'm just going to zoom back after I step into effects mode here. And what we want to do is we want to adjust the radius. The radius we don't want to be too much. Let's put it up somewhere around 33, I think. That's pretty good. Again, let's bypass. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to come down now and we're going to adjust the softness out. Now, if at any point I did talk about presets and the FX browser, and I think what I'm going to do is let's just do it with BCC vignette. Why not? What I'm going to do is I'm going to head up to the no preset drop down. I'm going to simply going to drop that down and I'm going to come down and we're going to save a new preset. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this KPM film look. Okay. And once I come down and I say save, this preset is going to be saved into the presets for this effect. Now you'll notice that it's not going to appear in the drop down right away. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the FX browser. Once the FX browser appears, you're going to notice that now right over here, there is my KPM film look look right there. You'll see that we can actually click through them all here. There's my KPM film look. I'm simply going to come down and we're going to apply that to our shot. And now if I didn't have it applied before, that effect or that preset is going to be applied to my shot right away. You'll see there's the bypass and again, very subtle, but creates a very cool, very organic and very film look. Now, again, what's important to keep in mind is that once I quit out of Media Composer and come back in, that preset will now appear again inside of the preset dropdown. So we'll have access to it at any time. Or again, if I need access to it right away, we can simply call up the FX browser and apply it to any shot that we happen to be working on. All right, so I hope this lesson has shown you that with a little bit of thought, you can get in and use the fantastic effects inside of Boris Continuum Complete to create looks for your footage that you might think that you have needed to have got by shooting with a film camera, but you can create it very quickly and easily 
inside of your Media Composer timeline. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.